All right, what we're going to do in this example is take a look at how you can deal with edges. What I've done here is previously selected and dragged over these two kids. They're on a layer by themselves. And if you look at the edges, while they're not horrible, they're a little too clean and crisp. They don't really look like they're blending in very much. Now, just as an aside, this tutorial is based on one that I did for a great little website called pixeladdiction.com for the same purpose of getting rid of those hard edges. Now, one option, of course, would have been in the original photograph of the kids to add a bit of a feather to my selection. But to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of that because the problem is if you feather, say, two or three and then it's too much, you have to kind of start over again. So here's the way I prefer to do it instead. Don't use any feathering in your original selection. Just drag them over and you get an edge that looks like this. And of course, they're on a layer by themselves. Then you hold down the Command or Control key, click on that layer to load it as a selection. Then we're going to switch to our Paths palette. And from the Paths palette pop-up menu, which is one of my favorite Photoshop tongue twisters, Paths palette pop-up menu, use the command Make Work Path. Now, probably what will happen is if the first time you do this, it'll use a tolerance of 2.0 pixels. We want this to be as small as possible, which is 0.5. And that simply means the path will try to follow your selection as accurately as possible. Then what we do is this. Now we go and get the blur tool, and this is where we're going to set the options for the amount of blur, which will include the size of your brush, and what you can do if you're unsure of the size, just kind of move it over position on the path. It's going to kind of straddle that path. So we probably want a slightly bigger size somewhere maybe in 35 and up here we're going to change the strength and actually I've already changed it but we would change it to start around 50 percent you can always go back and change it after the fact and then all you simply do is as long as the path is loaded so that it's highlighted you can see it there simply click on this second button which is the stroke path with brush in this case the brush is the blur tool you hit that button it will do its little calculations and basically will blur all along the edges and if I undo that it's pretty subtle but take a look at some of these edges like the her hair and so on and you can see all it's done is make it just a little more random a little more blurred I should say so here's the thing if you're if you're not happy with it undo it go and change some of the settings for the blur tool like a different strength or a different brush size and then do it again another thing you can try if you want to make it a little more random looking instead of just clicking on the stroke path of brushes. Still make sure you set all the options, but in this case you hold down the Option or Alt key as you click on this button. It brings up this little dialog box with lots of options. In fact, you could even smudge along the path and so on. But in our case, we're still going to blur, but we're going to make sure that Simulate Pressure is turned on in this case, and that will mean that when the blurring happens, it's more random along the edges. Okay. So that's the practical use. Now we always like to throw in something a little unusual. So just so you're aware, you could also use the same function for this kind of purpose. I'm going to add a new layer. Choose a color like some shade of green. And then we're going to switch to our brush tool as opposed to the blur tool. And I have some weird grassy weird brush thing happening. So we go back to our paths palette. Make sure the path is activated. In this case we're going to click on the stroke path with brush option and you'll see I get a lovely grass growing out of the arms of our children look all on a separate layer so obviously that wasn't the main purpose of this tutorial but just to give you an idea that that stroke path with brush has all kinds of interesting possibilities check it out it's pretty cool thanks very much for watching I'm Dave Cross and for this week's surprise ending I thought I'd surprise you by doing nothing ha see ya